From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. It helped me a lot, so if it's helping, if it can help me that much, it can help a lot of other people as well. A tradition in the Bozeman area continues. And coming up next, we'll talk to the namesake of the, of the Get Pope for Caden Blood Drive, now in its 10th year. And being a dad in 2023 has its challenges, but would you say dads are in crisis? Up next, we talk to an expert about why fatherhood and mental health are subjects many simply don't want to talk about. Well, it is 6.32 on this Friday edition of Already? Montana This Morning. Already. We made it, folks. We, we made did. it through the week, and now looking on to the weekend. There we go. Hopefully we got and some fun And there's no horsing going. around about that. Uh, no, no. Just <laughs> Ms. a Duncan little Aver's still here. That's yeah, exactly that's right. a, a little, little horsing around. Stay tuned to watch them here in just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. so fun. Yeah, that's so uh, fun. Early morning <laughs> temperatures remain pretty chilly across the area. I have it on the wrong graphic. Um, so oh, there's my favorite graphic. Of, yeah. Uh, flat line for us <laughs> with our rain chances for the next day or there's so. There's some life in there. There's a little life on Saturday, and we do expect to see some heavy your downpours. Uh, breaking down temperatures this morning, crisp and cool, maybe a light jacket, not a bad idea as we're starting the morning. It is gorgeous so looking off the Montana State University camera there. Uh, afternoon highs back into the mid to upper 60s. Uh, we're looking at a few passing clouds, maybe some mountain showers, but most of us should stay dry today. Enjoy that because it's going to be pretty damp as we go into early next week. We're going to break it all down for you in just a little bit. All right. Thank you very much, Matt. Now, it's been Bozeman's, Bozeman's blood drive for the last 10 years. Yeah, MTN's Kristen Merkel has the story on how the annual Get Poked for Caden blood drive impacts families around the region. One of Bozeman's biggest blood drives is happening right now behind me. Get Poked for Caden is not only honoring Caden Schrager, who survived cancer, but helping others in the region get the blood they need. Well, I know it, it helped me a lot. So if it's helping, if it can help me that much, it can help a lot of other people as well. Caden Schrager is almost 15. 11 years ago, he was diagnosed with an aggressive form of cancer. Now, as a survivor, he hopes this blood drive will help save other lives. It's really cool to be able to be a survivor and then be able to tell my story to other people and be able to help them out. Caden's mom, Pam Schrager, says they started this blood drive to not only help her son during treatment, but others as well. As we were sitting in the hospital um, watching him get blood transfusion after transfusion, friends asked what they could do to help, and so we said, start a blood drive. Schrager says drives like this are part of the reason why her son is here today. And I wouldn't wish anyone to be in this position, but for us to be able to give back now and have a healthy child that we get to honor every year is just a gift. Kira Rogala's son, eight-year-old Eli, has been battling cancer since he was five. She says she came to the drive to help other parents whose child may need blood transfusions like her son. As a parent, I always assume that the medical care that he's going to need is going to be there. The blood will be there when he needed it because he was severely anemic. And so if I can be a donor for somebody, for another parent whose child needs it one day, I am more than happy to be here to do that. Rogala says Get Poked for Caden makes a big difference for the people of Bozeman and beyond. Pam and Caden are doing this blood drive um, to really replenish resources here in the valley is um, is reassuring and it's it really is the gift of life. Caden is also doing a fundraiser for a pediatric cancer research foundation and plans to hike over 18 miles outside of Jackson Hole as a part of this fundraising. In Bozeman, Kristen Merkel, MTN News. What an amazing young That's awesome. man. That's just incredible. That's it kind of leaves the speechless a little bit. I, he's so grown up. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and it's awesome that he is. Yeah. Absolutely. Good stuff. All right, focusing now over on the national scene, the former president's not guilty plea in federal criminal case has started a domino of events leading up to a potential trial. Donald Trump's team of attorneys will undoubtedly file a series of motions to dismiss this case. Now, national political correspondent Ava Burnett uh, explains what legal steps the former president's team could take to squash these 37 criminal counts against him. Former President Donald Trump is about to embark on a legal challenge unlike any he's faced before. And in order to tackle this 37-count federal criminal indictment he now faces, defense attorneys are expected to file a series of motions that could delay the process. 
One motion the legal team has already hinted it will pursue is allegations of prosecutorial misconduct by the special counsel, Jack Smith's team. Former federal prosecutor and law professor Paul Pelletier explains that concept. They've asserted that the prosecution took liberties that they shouldn't have taken. In other words, they've asserted that one witness was offered a judgeship in exchange for their testimony. Now, I'm not so sure there's any truth behind that, but it'll be motions like that. The 49-page indictment accuses the former president of hoarding highly sensitive documents than obstructing justice when the government tried to get them back. In one exchange, Trump allegedly said to his attorney, wouldn't it be better if we just told them we don't have anything here? His current lawyers may argue that was privileged information between a client and his attorney. Prosecutors are aiming for a speedy trial, and the law requires a trial date be set within 70 days of the arraignment. My office will seek a speedy trial in this matter, consistent with the public interest and the rights of the accused. Legal experts believe any delay could be an advantage for the former president. And remember, if he's the elected nominee, at least in his mind he could be, um, then he's never going to be prosecuted if he's elected president. Also delay is his friend if another Republican gets nominated. Um, he would want that person to be elected and ultimately be pardoned. Apajoy Burnett, Scripps News, Miami, Florida. Something we'll definitely continue to follow here, yep. as well as the rest of the nation will. But focusing back a little closer to Montana, bringing rural America up to speed is billions of dollars of federal infrastructure money that will establish and improve internet connectivity. And Montana is getting a chunk of that money. MTN's Jackie Coffin tells us more. In the Howe Parish household, internet is key for running their small businesses. All my, all my businesses on online, everything I sell is all through social media and my website. From music festivals to fashion week, you might recognize their work. Angela Howe is the owner and designer of Choke Cherry Creek Designs. And her husband, Christian Parrish, is the hip-hop artist and motivational speaker, Superman. Uh, the need for um, a better internet is something that helps me as a business person. If the internet's not working for you, you know, you're just, you're going to lose out. You're going to lose out on that, on that business. But they also remember a time when building their brand online was a lot harder. When we were living in Crow, we um, would park at the college and use the Wi-Fi. And I don't know a lot of people do that. You can't run a business that way. This June, Senator John Tester says millions of dollars is coming into Montana to strengthen connectivity. And it's going to make a huge difference, a noticeable difference to the folks that are, that are out there that don't have access or they're underserved right now with poor access. Funding to the tune of $120 million from the American Rescue Plan that will service 61,000 locations across the state. $47 million from the Infrastructure Act going to counties in far northwest and eastern central Montana. And another large investment from the Infrastructure Act, Tester says we can expect later in June. It's unlike any other in the past. Uh, we've done it through basic appropriation bills and it's been significant, but nothing like you're going to see with the with the infrastructure bill funding. One tool to identify gaps in connectivity is a set of improved maps from the FCC. If this is done right, the entire state will have access to high-speed internet, and these maps are the first step in doing it right. For Howe and Parrish, strengthening internet in Montana is good news, and they hope connectivity improves for businesses across the state, especially for creators in indigenous communities. It is very important and it would really help the economy in our communities to have fast internet. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. The world is large, but it's yes. so small and you need to be a part of it. So exactly. that's a crucial thing anymore in this uh, day and age, no question. Yeah, absolutely right yeah. there. Well, when we talk about two Americas, it's the America you know and the America you may not know. Well, what about the America if you talk about? Yeah, fatherhood and mental health. It's okay for mom to have postpartum depression, but what about dad? Correspondent Matt Pearl has more. This story is about silence. It's about a subject that has reached the federal government, yet eludes conversation in most houses. It's about a subject that often isolates those affected, yet spreads across millions every year because it affects dads. Men and fathers 
tend to live with their mental health crises in silence and they don't talk about it and they tend to internalize it and then it can exacerbate. Derek Gordon teaches psychiatry at the Yale University School of Medicine. He focuses on the mental health of men and specifically fathers. He's speaking of a silent crisis, the ways in which men and specifically fathers live with anxiety and depression and don't seek help. So there, there are multiple ways that men sometimes are missed by the, the systems that they interact with. Oftentimes we don't engage and think about the ways in which mental health might be gendered. Let's start with men as a whole. A recent CDC survey found 26% of adult women had received mental health care in the past year. Men, just 15%. A previous study found that of men who had daily feelings of anxiety or depression, barely two out of five sought treatment. But what about when men have kids? We talk about postpartum depression. There's some burgeoning research that shows that men too experience a postpartum depression. Postpartum depression hits some dads. A notable rise in stress upon welcoming a child hits most dads. More than 100 countries have adopted paid paternity leave, but not America. And as the height of the COVID-19 pandemic moves further away, recent studies show more companies dropping paid leave for moms and dads. I feel as if there needs to be a whole reshaping in the way in which we think about maternity and paternity leave and a reframing of that leave from a disability conversation to one of a strengths conversation. The data says fathers want to spend more time with their families. But the data also says there's stigma against sacrificing their careers, with the same roots as the stigma that keeps many from seeking help. It comes back to silence. It's why this month, Dr. Gordon was one of two dozen speakers at a virtual event funded by the federal government. It was called Giving Hope, Serving and Supporting Fathers with Mental Health Challenges. The goal, expanding this critical conversation beyond workshops and universities, into the spaces of silence. We also have to think about what the policies are that drive our actions and drive our behaviors so that we, if we say we want to support family, that, that we're doing so in a way that actually values all members of the family, however that family is constructed. I'm Matt Pearl.